Okay, so for index match, the first thing I want to talk about is visualizing data that's categorical. Okay, so for this, I am going to in now you may have less tabs than me because mine are, some of mine are like where I was prepping. So find the one that says patients. And actually patient bins is the better one because that's where we took all the um, index match stuff out. So if you have your patient bins data. All right, we're going to start by um, looking at categories and data from one variable. So we're gonna look at education. So some of this will be uh, hopefully at this point, something you're starting to feel a little more comfortable with. At this point, um, the first part of this is something we've done now multiple times and that's a pivot table. So if you were to do a pivot table on education, how do you start? You go up here to B where education is and you select the whole column. We're gonna go to insert and the very first one, pivot table, right? So click on pivot table. Most of what's in here is fine the way it is, including a new worksheet. So let's go ahead and put this in a new worksheet. Now, once you get this, we get this uh, screen on the right, sorry, this like, interface on the right pivot table field. If you didn't get that, you wanna go up to the um, pivot table tools tab and go to the one that has analyze in it and go over to the show and toggle the buttons or the field list. I think it's the field list, yeah. Okay, so once you're there, we're gonna take education and we're gonna bring it down to rows. We're gonna just drag it down. Notice now I have all the rows in my all the categories in that variable education showed up here as rows. So now what do I do? Does anyone know how to build the pivot table out from this? Who remembers what to do next? You drag it down um, and it gave us the count. So I automatically did that for us. Okay, so now that we're here, um, we wanna go ahead and visualize this. Now we have a table, that's great, that's helpful. It's giving us the counts. Um, notice though, that if we wanted to think about college highest level of education, remember these are patients at a doctor's office and we wanna look at the highest level of college education. Um, normally you go, these are actually ordinal. It's an ordinal variable, it's not nominal. It's categorical, but an ordinal because there's a certain amount of education you have to achieve to get to the next one up, right? So high school really should come first in this list. So the way we're going to do that is you select the cell that has high school, hover around until you can get a four-pointed star, a four-pointed arrow. Once you have that, click and drag it up above college and let go. So now I just moved high school up. All right. Did you guys see how I did that? Let's try it with some college. Some college should come between high school and college degree. So Hover until you get a four-pointed star, click and drag. So now they're in the right order. Now that we have that, we have the count. Do you guys remember what we also frequently do with a, a categorical variable besides a frequency table? There's something that's a lot like it. It's called the relative frequency table. Does that ring a bell? Relative frequency table is when you get the percentage that each number is of the total. All right, it's a little more helpful. So we're gonna take education and how do we, what we're gonna do with education now is we're gonna drag it again. So if I drag this down, I now notice I have two columns that have the same numbers in them. All right, does anyone remember how we convert that count to a percentage? We're gonna go in here to where the values are over here in the bottom right. And we're gonna click that drop down and click value field settings. Once you click value field settings, you'll get this interface. And then we're gonna say show values as. Notice it says no calculation because it's just adding them up. What we're gonna wanna do is hit percentage of grand total and then we'll hit okay. So notice that now we have another column in our data table that's got the relative frequency. Let's change those, let's format that. We're gonna to go to the home tab and I'm gonna remove one of the decimals. I think I'll remove two. I'm just gonna do whole decimals. 
All right. So now I want to start graphing these, but I don't want to use the pivot table to do it. So I'm going to first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of this data into its own little table. And so for that, we're just going to select it. So select that whole table and copy it. And down below, this is that key technique I keep teaching you over and over. Paste special, paste just the values. All right. Now we need to fix this table because the pivot table has sort of these weird default column headings. The first one that says row labels, we're going to say this is the education variable. The next one over is frequency. And the next one over is relative frequency. OK, now I'm going to put a border around the I'm going to put a box around the whole thing. So I'm going to go to the border button and select outside borders. Then I'm going to put a line underneath the columns by selecting bottom border. And I'm going to do that again under graduate. So it starts to look like a little bit like a table like that. You can play around with this for a while. I'm going to put a right border um, on the first column. OK, and I'm going to center everything. So I'm selecting the table and I'm centering. And nothing here is written in stone as right or wrong. This is stylistic. It's kind of like whatever you feel makes it look easier to read. I'm going to change my relative frequencies to percents, though, because everybody expects that. All right. So again, you can do this. I'm just showing you some little different formatting tools. You can shade, you can do different things. The main thing I want you to get at is that this is now removed from the being connected to the pivot table. So now we just have numbers here and I'm going to select. Notice that I'm selecting the education and frequency column variable names and just the data. I'm ignoring the grand total at the bottom. We're gonna go to insert and go to column and right in here i'm going to pick the first one which is clustered column and notice it automatically was nice enough to call to um give the y-axis uh as a as the title of the chart sometimes it'll do that um and it's got each of the bars uh shaded with the height from the numbers here now if i actually want my chart to show me so i don't have to kind of squint my eyes and guess what those numbers are I'm going to go to this plus. If you're on a Windows, you can hit the green plus. If you're on a Mac, you're going to have to go up to add chart element in the upper left corner and come down to data labels. And then you can decide where you want them. Outside end is usually a nice spot. The other thing on the chart element or the green plus is to add an axis title. And I'm going to use this little um, right arrow key to choose the primary horizontal. And down here, I'm going to write education. Okay. So now we're getting a breakdown of these patients at this at this um, doctor's office on what their education, highest education level is. All right. Frequently, no pun intended, frequently, frequency tables, we want them as relative frequency tables. So what I really want to do is get this table to be relative frequency. So one way I can do that, there's many ways to do this. I'm just going to show you another one, a one way, one of many. I'm going to select education, and then I'm going to hold down my control key or your command key and hit relative frequency. So now I've selected these two little blocks of data, and I'm going to do the same graph. I'm going to say insert graph, and I'll insert that graph. Notice now I can put it over here next to it. Well, okay, I will I will put it next to it and <laughs> scroll over a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna add the same thing here. Let's add these percentages in here with the data labels. All right, so now you can see um, you can see exactly how many values were in your data set, which is also in, is is important, but also what percentage of your data. Okay, so that's how we visualize with a bar chart. Um, our frequency and relative frequency for one categorical variable. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is how do we visualize one numerical variable? 
And for that, um, we usually use a histogram. So we're gonna go back over to that patient data, that patient VINs data. And let's say we wanna visualize, um, I don't know, none of these are really good ones. Um, let's say we're gonna visualize heights. So I select the height column. You guys have already done this, I believe. Um, this one's really easy. It's, as, it's the same steps that we did for a box plot. You select the data, we go to insert, we go to that middle one, but this time we actually use the histogram button. And you should have something like this. You can move this. So um, I'm working and I can go ahead and move this chart using the move chart button, or you can cut and paste it, but you wanna put it over where we were working a second ago. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you the move chart button by going object in and it was sheet four. Sometimes this doesn't work. I don't know why. Let me see if it's over here on sheet four. Okay, good, it is. If you don't see it, it might be at the very, very, very bottom of your sheet. And if so I have this chart, I'm gonna make it smaller. I'm scrolling down, I'm moving it somewhere new. And this was um, heights, right? So let me put this heights data in here, heights. All right. So what I wanna show you is how to, now notice, for, before I show you how to change the bins, let's compare a bar chart and a histogram. So notice the bar chart has space between the columns, right? The histogram, there's no space between the columns. And, it, and part of the reason why is if you look at the cutoffs on the bins, it took the number line and, it, and it's cutting it off so it has a right inclusive. Remember we talked about this whole right inclusive thing? So that the number 1.564 is in the first bin and anything even slightly bigger than 1.564 is in the second bin. So we've now created a histogram of our heights. And I, what I wanna show you is how to modify your histogram. You can actually see very different patterns when you change the number of bins. And sometimes you just have to play around with a little to kind of see if what is the ideal number of bins. Somewhere between 15 and 20 is usually the rule of thumb. So for this, how do we change this? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight right now. So the way we do it is um, on the bottom of the histogram is, are these bins. We're gonna select those. Now, if you're in a Mac, you can to two finger right click and hit format axis. I right click and go down to format axis. If you do not see that, oh, actually this won't work on a Mac. You have to go up to format, and on uh, format, come over here and choose the drop down arrow. This is for a Mac only. You're going to choose series. And on series, you're going to find the num uh, something where it talks about bins. It's going to look a little different than mine. It's a drop down, select number of bins. So if you're on a, on a Windows laptop, it's going to look like mine. I wish I had another projector where I could project the Mac <laughs> so you guys could see it you know, the different ways. Um, but okay, so in here, um, select here where it says eight. Okay, let's change that to 12 so you can see how it starts to look a little different. Now change that to 20. It starts to look a lot different. And now let's just for fun, change it to 40. So you start getting this crazy like spread of data. And what happens is it's some, you get to a point where you really lose any value in it because you just, you're not able to see any kind of grouping or trend. Um, too little is like, let's say we did four. You don't really know what's going on. You, you know, so you kind of want to understand the distribution of your data. And sometimes different numbers of bins give you different information. So you play around with it a little to see what you're, you know, if you're seeing a trend in your data. I'm going to go with 12 for this one. Kind of tells me that the data looks like trimodal in a sense. It's there's a there's the low, there's the people who tend to be short, medium, or tall. It looks like there's three groups all included here. In this data, there's no gender, so I uh, no uh, sex, excuse me. I can't dif differentiate this between male and female. So that probably is mixing this up, but I can't really see two groups exactly in here either. 
and this might be artificial data, I think, on some of this stuff. I'm really not happy with the people at Connect. They told me all their data was real and it's not. <laughs> so, um, okay. All right, so now we've talked about how to visualize one numerical variable. All right, now we're gonna switch and talk about um, showing relationships between two variables. Okay. So the first one we're gonna talk about is um, a contingency table. Remember when we have two categorical variables, and that's where we put the counts. We have the two categorical variables, maybe hair color, number of cars in your house. And you, you know, fill in the numbers. That's a contingency table. Then if we convert those, remember we did this in 210, when you get the totals and we get the percentage out of the grand total and the percentage in each row. And we talk about the marginals. We talked about that being the empirical distribution. And the empirical distribution is where you talk about the frequency, the, uh, the probabilities for any one of those cells is just the relative frequency for that cell. So let's go ahead and set that up using Excel. All right, so I'm gonna be using the index match data again. Going back over here to patients bins, I'm gonna look at the first two columns, race and education. So I'm gonna select A1, and I'm gonna, again, we're gonna build this with a pivot table. The pivot table is very, very powerful in Excel. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll down using the right scroll bar. It'll help me go quicker to the bottom of my data. And I'm gonna select um, A1 to B401. And now I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna go to insert. And same thing, pivot table. And I'm going to put that in a new worksheet. Might as well keep things clean here. All right. Now, this is where you start to see the real power of a pivot table. So far, it's helped count, figure out counts for categorical variables. Okay, now it's going to be able to do contingency tables for us on the fly. So all you're going to do is put one of these in the rows. I'm going to put race in the rows and put the education in the columns. Okay. Now, um, the order for race isn't really that, um, there's no order to race, so we're not gonna order that, but up here in education, we're gonna order this. So we're gonna play the same game we did before, um, or maybe we want high school. We're gonna find that four pointed arrow. And once I get it, I'm gonna hit shift and drag high school over. And then some college I'm gonna go next. Okay, so I just set up my columns the or in the order I wanted, just like we did a second ago when we were playing with this one before. Now I'm gonna, now because there's both, um, I'm gonna assume this is clean data, there's nothing missing. So I can use both race, there's the same number of data for race as there is for education. So I can use either one, it's gonna count how many of each there are. So I can pick either one of these and I can show you because we'll get both, we'll get the same response. I can bring race down and it's gonna give me the count of race that the count of the number of rows that fits both the um, columns for the number of education and the, and broken down by race. So you can see the totals over here all right, notice if I grabbed education instead and I bring it down, um, under this category high school, I get the exact same numbers. That's what I was just getting ready to tell you. That's kind of a way to confirm that you have clean data, that you have no missing data, because it doesn't matter which one I get, I got the exact same numbers, okay? And I don't need all that repeated, so I'm just gonna get rid of it. So I'm gonna grab, oops, I'm gonna grab that count of education and get rid of it, all right. So now that we um, set this up, we're going to um, do the same thing we just got done doing. We're gonna create a copy of this. So I'm gonna copy this down. I'm going to select it, copy and paste below, paste special so that I have my table. I'm gonna format my table a little bit by changing row labels to the word race. I'm gonna add the word education here. Okay, let's put a box around this whole thing. So I'm gonna go up to the 
uh, borders, I'm going to, instead of picking the all borders, I'm going to pick outside borders. Okay. Um, under the, the categories for education, I'm going to, um, well, actually, let's just center all this. Okay. Let's take education and select all the columns to the right, the, the cells to the right of education, and we'll hit this merge and center. Let's go ahead and put a border underneath those categories. So I'm gonna click the borders and hit the very top one bottom border. I'm gonna do the same thing down here um, to separate the grand total. <clears throat> And then I'm going to put a border, a right border for my race categories. All right. I guess I could have done bottom border there too. Okay. Now this whole part right here, you can play around with this, making it look however you want. You can, you know, make it as fancy as the one above it or just leave it like this. At some point you just say, okay, enough. I want to create now. Um, a graph from this. Now, what I want to do when I create this graph is I don't want to select um, the grand total. I'm just going to select the data inside. I'm leaving off the last column and the bottom row. All right. I just want to get the, the actual counts of the cells themselves. When I select that, I'm going to go to he up here to insert. And we're going to go to that same option that we did a second ago. And I'm going to show you first the um, side by side columns. So this is showing us the um, breakdown of college um, by um, each of the races in the patients at this um, clinic. Now, if you wanna go, go to chart element, I guess go to data labels and come here and you can hit the data labels and we can see the actual counts that will come from this table. Okay, so um, here we, we can do on the chart title is we can say um, education by uh, race. Maybe, and on the, we can add, uh, you can go to up here to chart element, add um, axis titles, primary vertical, we would say frequency. All right, and we don't really need one on the x-axis. If it's self-explanatory, you don't need to clutter things up unnecessarily. Okay, so now um, we can also do the same exact graph. So we can select that same data and go back up here to insert and that same selection. But this time I want you to do a, a stacked column. So a stacked column gives you the same information, but all the numbers are stacked on top of each other. Okay, so I'm gonna put these next to each other so you can kind of see them. Let me, I'm gonna make them a little small, smaller. All right, so that's just another way to see the data. Um, depending on what you want to see, you may think one is easier to read for a particular reason than another. Another one that um, is often used is what's called a 100% stacked column. So I'll show you a third one, and that is where we select the same data. We're going to go up here to insert, and we're going to go to that one. But now we're going to pick the third option. The third option is going to convert our numbers and we're going to get we're going to be able to see the percentage. It is going to still give us the numbers, but it's showing you by the amount that the bar is how much of each one of these categories we have. OK. Um, and so you can kind of get a relative feel percentage wise, but it sometimes instead of doing this, it might make more sense to have those actually be percentages. All right. So what I'm going to do, rather than add a whole bunch more columns to my pivot table, is I'm just going to go up to my pivot table. 
that's already up here. I'm gonna now change it to be percentages. So I can come down here and, and where count of race was, I'm gonna select that, go to value field settings. Now we're gonna show value as. Now this is where it can be really tricky because these percentages, if we give the probability, we can say percentage of grand total. And those percentages are each of those numbers divided by 400. So that's, and I'm gonna get rid of one of the decimals, oops. So each one of the numbers from this contingency table divided by 400 is the relative probability. That's what we call the empirical probability table for this data. That's, a, that's the proportion of the data that that represents. But we can also change this in case that we want to actually know for within each race, what percentage went to college or how, what was the education level. So to do that, we go to the same thing value field settings, but in the show value as, where it says percentage of grand total, we're gonna to go to percentage. And if you look at this, we want row total. And if we say that, you'll get 100% in your row totals and you see your percentages. I'm gonna actually um, get rid of one more decimal here. So we get our percentages um, for each um, group, for each group um, broken down by race, how many, uh, what their highest level of college is. Okay, so now let's go ahead and copy that and we're gonna make a table from that. Um, and it's a good idea here to, to go ahead and copy the grand totals because it reminds you that those percentages are for the rows. So we're gonna copy that, bring that down. Maybe we can come down a little bit, give ourselves a little space and print just the numbers again. All right, now if we went through all this trouble of formatting this, by the way, we can select this table, right click, hit that paintbrush, the format paintbrush, and we're going to come down here and, and format this whole thing using that. Oops, that didn't work. Hold on. Oh, I have to add education first. And I need to change row labels to say race. All right, now that I did that, I can copy this formatting over. All right, and I'm gonna switch everything over to percentages. Okay. Okay, so now that I have that, I can go ahead and come in here and question. The paintbrush on a Mac. Who knows how to use the paintbrush on a Mac? Uh, it would just like highlight it and at the end, just that little brush to the right of the page. So just yeah. Just select what you want to do. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Okay. So now I'm going to go and make a similar graph to what we did above, but I'm going to do it with this data here. And um, so at this point, hopefully you're good with this. You can do this, go insert and go into the bar chart. And maybe you wanna select the stacked one. So now we've selected the stacked one um, and uh, we'll give that data label. So now we see the percentages instead of numbers. Now, once you select this data, you may say, okay, but I actually want to know about, I, I want to know this the other way around. So you go select it, come up here to the date in the design. It might say chart design on your version. Come over here to where it says data and then go switch row and column. So look what that did. It changed it. So now we have the percentage of race for the highest level of education. Um, so we can see, for example, that the people who had the highest, the percentage of race of all the patients that had um, their highest level education being um, high school were Asian Pacific Islanders. Um, the percentage of the highest percentage um, for those that had a college degree of these patients was Hispanic. No, sorry. 
non-Hispanic white was the highest percentage. And, um, but you got to remember that the numbers, that the numbers just, there were more numbers there. So it might make more sense to look at these percentages for that. Sorry, the other way around. So within, within each, so it depends on what question you're trying to ask. So you got to think carefully about what the question you're trying to ask, and you can flip this back and forth and make sure you're clear on what the question is. Since we were doing, oh, this is really important. Yeah, I wanted to be clear on this. So because we did our rows as um, percentages on rows, this is really the only appropriate way to do this chart. Um, if I wanted to do this chart um, the other way, I would change my pivot table to be percentages of row co of column totals. And then I could do it that way. So let's go ahead and do that. So let me click on here, go to count of race, change this to show value as percentage of column total. All right, now I can get this. Oops, I have to hit okay. Now those numbers all change. Now the hundreds at the bottom, because now I'm breaking down the race by each type of, um, of degree. All right, so you can make another table from that and then you can basically, and I'm not changing chart titles here because I got my eye on the clock, but there's a lot of different things you can do comparing these two, um, these types of data. Side-by-side -side columns, um, these are called side-by-side. -side. This is stacked and then this is 100% stacked. So they each kind of present the same data in a slightly different way to enable you to um, kind of more clearly understand what you're looking at. All right, the next thing I wanna talk about is how to visualize data um, between two numerical variables. So for this, we've already seen um, scatter plots. And it's um, generally a good idea if we um, put the data next to each other, kind of sometimes makes things a little easier. So I'm going to pick um, exercise. I think there's no, no relationship here. Let's go with, I think this data might not be real data, but I'm gonna confirm that. Let's put weight and height next to each other. These, we, we know these should be correlated because the taller you are, the more you weigh generally. So let's see if these two are, so we're gonna compare these two with a, um, Scatter plot. So we're going to select those two. We can go to insert, come down here to charts, select scatter plot. Yeah, this is fake data. Yep, they gave us fake data. Shame on them. You guys see why it's fake data? Because it should be a it should be a increasing relationship. Um so okay, well, let's. Let's leave this alone then and switch gears to the other data set. So the other one is the correlations data set. Oh, it's already open. Okay, so we're gonna um, look in here at some correlations. Hold on. Let's look at, um, Sorry, I, I forgot which one I did. Oh, that's not the one I did. Oh yeah. Let's look at um, age. So we're gonna select age and then hold down the control key and select salary. So we're gonna see if there's a relationship between age and salary. So um, I'm gonna to go to insert, scatter plot. 
And we see what appears to be some a bit of a trend there. So you can we can put this in um, another. We can open up another um, blank sheet and move it there. Sorry, I lost it. I don't know what happened to it. All right, let's do it again. Age and salary. Insert. Scatter plot. And I'm going to move that into this blank sheet. So it looks like there's a relationship there. Yeah. Oh, okay. So what I'm doing is um, selecting C for age, and then I hold down my control key. So if you're in a Mac, probably be command, and then click salary. That Did that work for you? Okay, great. Um, now, the next thing I want you to do, because there's so much data in here, is we're going to make a smaller version of this data set to play around with a little bit. So um, select A1 and then come down to um, in, in uh, the K column, which is the furthest one to the right, we're going to come down to um, 201. And I'm just going to copy that into its own um, worksheet and paste it there. Okay, I just wanted to get a little less data because if not, it's too many dots on the graphs. You can't really see them. Okay. So that's the um, the most common thing to do with, with numerical, two, uh, two variables that are both numerical. All right. The next thing um, I want to talk about is what do you do when you have um, numerical and categorical data? Okay. So let's go back in here um, and I'm going to do a scatter plot of salary and let's go by um, whether there was, they had college or not. Okay. So I go in here to salary and I'm going, I'm in my data that has a little less data in it now because I didn't want to overwhelm you guys with data. And we're going to do a scatter plot here. Okay. So in this scatter plot, um, I think, no, actually, I'm not telling you the right way to do that. Sorry, delete that. You know what? I think there's not enough time. We'll start fresh with doing um, one numerical and one categorical on Thursday. Okay, guys. Yeah, hold on. I can do this table a different way where I can actually compare the relative amounts in each one with each other more directly. And I can do that by selecting that same data. I'm just going to choose a different chart now. So the chart I'm going to choose is this um, stacked column chart. And I'll move that over here next to this so we can see it. So you can kind of compare them. OK, so now it's taking all those numbers and it's stacking them up, um, giving us the totals across. So we're going to have 30, 67. One, those are the totals in, if across at the tops of these bars. Um, if we Give it data labels, we're gonna get the numbers inside the bars. And um, again, we can give it that same title, education by race. We can add uh, the axis, sorry, axis labels to axis titles to this. Here we're gonna, we can say frequency, oops. And uh, here we can say race. All right. 
So you can kind of see it's the same information. It's just visually presented in a different way. And depending on what's going on, it can help you see things that the other one won't. Okay. Now, um, another thing we could do is we can um, convert all this to what's called the empirical distribution or the probability table for this data. And the probability table um, would be where we convert every one of these to a proportion of the overall. So if we wanted to do the proportion of their overall, I just select inside my pivot table. And once I'm inside my pivot table, I'm gonna to go to the design, sorry, no, analyze and show the field list button. I'm basically gonna change my pivot table, but because I've copied it out down below, it's not gonna change the graphs or change anything. I just wanna change my pivot table. I'm gonna go down to that values, count of race, select that value field settings, and then go show value as, and per percentage of grand total. Okay, so if I do percentage of grand total, I've now converted everything to percentages. I can select all this data and get rid of some of these decimals that are just like kind of annoying. All right. Now, if I wanna make a graph of this that shows percentages, I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna select my data, copy it and paste special. So I'm only getting the, the values down here. Um, now that I have this as values, I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna just copy this row from here. In fact, um, I'm gonna copy this one too. All right, now let's say I say, well, I, I don't wanna go through all the trouble of reformatting this. I don't even remember everything I did. I did like 10 things. One way to copy that whole formatting without having to rebuild it is select that table. And then if you're on the home tab, go to this format painter, this paintbrush. If you're on a windows, you can right click and the paintbrush will be right up here. And then just select the whole area where you wanna format and voila, you get the formatted table. All the things you did have been copied. The only change is that we need to make this percentages. Okay, so now that we've made that percentages, okay, um, we can visualize this using similar kind of charts. Now, what I want to go over with you is that we may actually want to create a bar chart, kind of like this one, the stacked column chart, where the percentages represent the percentage within each race. Okay, so now this is a place where you can, you have to be really careful. You don't want to mess this up. If you go up here to the pivot table, and you go down here to the count of race, value field settings in this show values as, if I want to know the percentage for each race, I'm going to go and I'm going to go, um, whoops, am I going to select um, percentage of column total or percentage of row total? If I want to know the education by race, it's going to be percentage of row total. So I'll put percentage row total and then I'll hit okay. Now notice that the row totals all add up to 100%. That means these percentages are the percentage for American Indians. These percentages apply only to Asian Pacific Islanders, okay? So I'm gonna do the same thing I just got done doing. I'm gonna copy this data. I'm gonna paste special. I'm going to Use the formatting from my previous table because I liked how that looked. I'm gonna paintbrush, get that paintbrush and I'm gonna select everything down here. And then I'm gonna copy this top part that I like how I renamed everything. All right, so now I have very quickly a nicely formatted table that has um, the percentages for each row. Now I'm going to select that data go to insert, select, and now I'm gonna pick the third choice, which is 100% stacked column. All right, so now what this 100% stacked column is, 
is it's giving me the percentages from each race up to 100% for that category. I can go in here and add data values, data labels, and I can see those percentages as I read them across are showing up in these bars. And that what that does is it enables me to connect, compare uh, categories percentage-wise one to another visually. So this would be, I would call this percent of education by race. Okay, and I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna um, do the axes because I think it's self-explanatory, but from that title. All right, now notice if I select this, let's say I say, okay, but I wanna know this the other way around. I wanna know if I look at um, high school, who, if, if I look at people whose highest degree is like a college degree, what percentage of those, of all these patients, remember these are patients from a doctor's office, are um, of what race? So I could say, well, I can go up here and you can see up in the design tab, there's a switch row and column. So if I switch the row and column, I now switch this, but this is actually false. If I add up these numbers, they don't necessarily add up to 100%. It didn't change the numbers on me, all right? Because these numbers come from a pivot table. So you have to be really, really careful not to mess this up. This is actually, that was actually a false graph. This is the right graph because these percentages are row totals. 100% is by race. And that's why I have race, I have bars stacked to race. So let's say if I want it the other way, I'm going to go up here. I'm going to go to my pivot table. I'm going to go to my value field settings, and I'm going to switch this from percentage of row total. Now, notice that these numbers at the bottom on this pivot table, they're like 24, 26, 28. Now I want the percentage that each race is of each um, education. So I'm going to do percentage of column total. So watch how those numbers change when we hit percentage of column total, and we hit OK. So notice all those numbers changed. All right, so now what we wanna do is graph that. So to graph that, I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna copy, come down and paste. Oops, I did the mistake. Paste special, paste special. I don't want that to be a pivot table. Then I'm gonna select this right here and I'm going to uh, copy my top two rows, and then I'm gonna select the whole table and copy the formatting by um, hitting this paintbrush and selecting that paintbrush. Okay, so now notice the numbers are very different because now these are, this is the percentage for each column. And now I can, now if I wanna make this graph, I do the same thing again, I select that data, insert, Go to that bar chart, select that third one, the stacked bar chart. But now this is wrong because my these are percentage by total. So now in here is where I hit switch row and column. And now I can add the data labels in here and they will now be right. They will match these columns. And so this is the percentage of race by education. All right, so let me put these next to each other so you can see the difference between them. All right, so here you can see, this has got high school, some college, college and graduate, and it's showing you the percentage of the patients at this doctor's office that have that as their highest degree of education. Um, out of the number that are in that category, okay? So that's a very different way to see the same thing. Okay, so now we've kind of nuclear bombed, if you will. We've done all these different variations on how to view two categorical variables using contingency tables and different variations of bar charts. Okay. Um, the next thing I wanna show you is going to be how to view two numerical variables. So for two numerical variables, we're going to look at the correlation data, which if you don't have it on your laptop is in that data module on Brightspace. So I'm gonna look at the correlation data. 
We're going to go to the technical sales reps data worksheet. So in this technical sales, um, we want to compare. We go to the top. Um, I actually want, want you guys to set this up because there's too much data in here. This, I think, might be real data. I'm not 100% sure. I'm hoping. But um, it's too much data, and the graph ends up being like a big cloud. So I want you to make a smaller version of it. So we're going to pick A1 and then come down to uh, row 201. And we're just going to make a, a we're going to just take the first 200 records in this data. So we're going to come over here to 201. It's a little number five. Oops, I should have hit shift click and I got to go back up. Shift click at A1. OK, so we got that data. Copy it into a new worksheet. So we want to do a scatter plot. Of, we're going to look at age, age and salary. So I'm going to select age and then I hit my control key or command key and come over and hit salary. You see how I selected those two columns? Now I'm going to go to insert and come down to the bubble graph and choose bubble graph. All right, so you can see in here, there seems to be a little bit of a trend of salary. So let's change this and say salary by age. All right, and we'll add in here to the axes, titles. We're going to say salary here. And on the next one over here, we'll, we'll put age. Okay. Um, notice salary should be dollars. So I'm going to go over here to salary, select salaries, go to the home tab and put, hit the dollar sign. It's going to automatically change it in my data and in my graph. So that's nice. Excel did that for us. Um, on this salary by age graph, I um, can kind of do a couple things. I'm going to select it. Now, if you guys remember, we can run correlations on this. Um, but on the graph itself, we can come to the design tab, go to add chart element, come down to trend line and select a linear trend line. That trend line to me is hard to see kind of. So I'm going to select it, right click on it and hit format trend line. And then come over to the paint bucket. And on the paint bucket on the width, I'm going to come in here and put four. And then on the color, I'm going to change it to something I think is more visible, like red. So now you can see the trend line. It's not a huge slope, but there seems to be a little bit of something going on. Okay, so this is um, this is not only how we check for correlations being legitimate, but it's in general how we compare two variables, two numerical variables. Okay. All right, so hopefully that gives you some stuff to play with and work with, and uh, I'll see you on Thursday.